Well, here we are again for one of my uh, discussions with representatives of various uh, sectors, just exploring a little bit uh, about how the coronavirus has affected their sector uh, and their businesses. And joining me uh, this time is the Deputy President of uh, the NFU, NFU Cymru, National Farmers Union, uh, Aled Jones, who is also a dairy farmer uh, here in North Wales. Uh, Croeso, welcome, Aled. Can I just start by um, asking maybe uh, that you explain a little bit about the structure of the market and how uh, the market was uh, split across retail and, and food services initially, but of course when the coronavirus uh, broke and, and had its impact on, on businesses and restaurants and, and coffee chains and the like, how that sort of affected different parts of the, uh, the farming sector, the dairy sector particularly. Well, in, in terms of value terms, nearly half of the dairy um, market would be in uh, food service. Um, it's, it's much larger than people anticipated, but uh, you should never underestimate to know how much milk and coffee goes in restaurants and hotels throughout the country. Uh, so it is a very big market, and I don't think people realise how, how significant part of the, the market it generally was. So when the lockdown was announced on the 23rd, that market was lost overnight. It took a long while for retail to be able to respond to that demand. We saw shortages in the shops, unfortunately, but that was purely uh, um, you know, the problems of logistics of being able to get product into the market and onto the shelves. Uh, that's been resolved by now, but we haven't really made up for what we've lost in food service. So that clearly had an impact, and many of us saw images of, of milk being poured uh, away as well, which was, you know, wasn't something that any of us wanted to see. Tell us a bit about how the sector has, has had to respond to that, and of course how maybe some of the producers also have been caught up in, in, in difficulties as a result, or some of the processes, I should say. Yeah, so, so the companies who were probably more exposed to the food service sector, uh, that you saw images of <clears throat> milk not being collected on farm. Uh, it caused a, caused a lot of, of problems and worry for those farmers that were involved and not being paid for that, that milk likewise. So we um, recoup those losses um, that, that we, you know, they lost during my Now, the... <clears throat> the the retail sector will make some of that volume up, but we will unable to get the whole lot of it back into, you know, to the whole total markets. Now, um, the government, of course, has announced some sort of uh, support package for uh, those dairy farmers who have been most uh, affected by uh, the situation as, as it is. Is that sufficient? How do you see that working out? And also, what kind of support would you like to see for the wider sector? Because, of course, the beef sector, for example, has also experienced uh, uh, not a dissimilar hit, really, in terms of losing uh, much of its uh, market. And, of course, there's going to be a lot of lamb coming onto the market in, in months to come as well. Yes, so, so um, the red meat sector was impacted uh, as severely as dairy in the beginning, um, particularly because there was so, so much mints <coughs> sold in retail uh, and the high value at all the hotels and restaurants. So that's had a big impact on the value of those carcasses. Um, now, thankfully now, uh, HCC have some promotion money available to now to, to promote the sales of those high, higher value cuts. And we're beginning to see uh, a better distribution of the value of that carcass coming back to the market now. It, it'll take time, but I think people have been beginning to realize now that you know, what they've lost um, through hotels and restaurants that they can gain by cooking those at home. Uh, so that'll, that'll you know, take time to work its way through. In dairy, um, there's another promotion scheme um, funded by HDB Dairy UK and the government where they will hope, seek to promote uh, liquid milk in, in particular. That'll probably take uh, probably 12 weeks of promotion work um, and they'll hope to be able to stimulate the market to take some of the liquid markets up in more in retail. Now, we work with Welsh Government, uh, well, since beginning of February, oh, sorry, beginning of April, where we were very concerned of the impact on dairy sector. Um, now, 
our lobbying work was to highlight you know the, the the grave situations that some of these producers were in and they needed uh, supporting. Now, there has been a scheme announced um, in conjunction with DEFRA in, in Westminster. Uh, this will be based on those farmers who have lost 25% of the value of their milk and that will be compensated up to 70% of that up to a, a maximum figure of £10,000 per farm. Now, it's better than nothing, but that was the best that we were able to achieve at the time. So longer term, I think there are fundamental things like uh, dairy contracts that need um, you know, special attention. Some of the weaknesses that we have in the dairy sector is primarily due to poor contracts. Now, there will be a consultation coming out of government soon, I hope, and I do sincerely hope that followed and they'll express their opinions. If we can get a better mechanism of working together as processors and producers, I think the future will be better. But until then, you know, my, my you know, optimism is, is in, in some regards, is, is tempered until we get a better mechanism of, of, uh, of relationship between producers and processors. Well, I certainly share that uh, hope that you have, but of course it is true that this pandemic has exposed, I think, some of the structural weaknesses within the market, and you touched somewhat there on uh, you know, the longer-term issues that need to be tackled. One, one thing that's been suggested, although we wouldn't want to go back to exactly the Milk Marketing Board, but there might be a need for some sort of body or organisation to be able to manage the market a little bit more effective. How would you respond to that? Well, 100%, you know, if we continue as we are, we'll only reap exactly what we have presently. So we've got to do something different, most definitely. Now then, as I said earlier, you know, first and foremost, let's get involved, better contracts, uh, fairness, you know, share the risk, producer representation, that needs improving, most definitely. Uh, we've seen those companies who have been able to take advantage of the markets and they will undermine uh, producer confidence in them as well. And The fact that being able to use the term with no notification at all. So, you know, there are there are a catalogue of things that we can probably high agencies look on. I don't think we'll get the milk ten years ago, but I think we might be able to get something as good, if not better, long term. So, you know, I worked on a, a group of farmers together on looking at dairy producers organizations as the initial basis between the producers and the processors making sure that there was some equality there and there, there, there was a sharing of information between the two parties to make sure that they were working together now if we can get to that position i think you know the confidence in the in the dairy sector will come back i'm, I'm glad to say we do have those in in um, cooperatives you know there is that association there but 70% of the milk in the UK is into private companies. Well, that's certainly something I think that we need to pursue uh, once we're out of the woods, as they say, in terms of the, uh, uh, the crisis that we're currently uh, battling against. So, Alec, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, apologies for the quality of, of the broadband. I suppose that could be another discussion that we have at some point, because clearly uh, we're all using much more of it now than we have done uh, in the past. Thank you again for joining us.